Okay, good cues from the global markets, uh, except perhaps Brent crude. Here's Nigel with the world view. Well, that's right. Overnight, the Dow hit 200 points, and in fact, uh, it's on a three-day winning session. That's the first we've seen since November onwards. But the other couple of indices as well, the Nasdaq as well as the S&P 500, both of them, they notched up good gains in yesterday's uh, trading session. The key point, though, was the tweet that came in from Donald Trump. He said that the talks with China are going very, very well, and that sparked hopes or optimism that Beijing and Washington, they can come to a deal. And in fact, this entire trade dispute can get resolved. So that's what set uh, markets on fire. And overnight, in fact, we also had a good rally on the FANG stocks. So Facebook, Apple, Alphabet, Netflix, as well as uh, Google, all of them, they had a big, big run uh, overnight. And all those stocks were upending between 1% to around 3%. Odd. In fact, we had uh, Tim Cook, who spoke uh, uh, to CNBC and said that the ecosystem at Apple is very, very strong. It's never been stronger. So that's what led the Apple stock as well higher. European markets, they as well move higher on hopes that, in fact, you know, this entire trade dispute can get resolved. Importantly, uh, the economic data coming out of there is not very, very encouraging. So disappointed yet again, the Eurozone Business Climate Index did see a contraction in the month of December in comparison to November. Asian markets today, they are running through. And in fact, they have taken the positive cue overnight, all of them up, anything between 1% to around 2% odd. Important to note, as Anuj mentioned, Brent crude prices edging towards $60 per barrel. And the dollar index had shown some strength, moved towards 96 odd. It's cooled off from that top. For starters, SGX Nifty suggesting an uh, 80 point bump up just to kickstart trade. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, 80 point bump up uh, after three days of gains for the Indian markets. Uh, that's genuinely positive. But uh, how do you look at queues from here on after that uh, fairly decent rally we saw on Wall Street and Asia as well? An important tweet coming from President Trump, Richard Harris, Chief Executive of Fort Shelter Investment, and Adrian Mowat, Emerging Equity Markets uh, Strategist, join us now. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. Thank you very much, both of you, for joining us. Uh, uh, Richard, first up, uh, how would, uh, there looks like a combination of very good factors, stimulus in China, uh, the Fed backing off, uh, both in terms of balance sheet and rates, and now possible trade truce. Uh, does it look like uh, the risk assets have a clean run? Um, it looks as if things are a lot better. I think what happened in the in the fall in the market is that uh, everybody had a lot of a shock. You know, they suddenly realised what could happen if markets rose too high, um, and they've come back much towards more sensible valuations. I think the unique thing that we're seeing at the moment is, oh. is that valuations really are very cheap, uh, and I think that the important thing with that is um, is that markets are. Uh, uh, are obviously looking a lot better uh, shaped than they were, say, uh, during the other crisis. Adrian, would you agree? Uh, it, does it look like equities could have a good first half in 2019? I think equities can have a very good half in the first half of 19. Remember, we're starting after a big fall in markets in the final quarter of last year. Um, and the markets were falling because of this fear around the U.S. economy. And the data that's coming out of the U.S. economy really doesn't support this recession fear. I think the employment numbers were absolute Goldilocks mm. in that you had a f increase in the unemployment rate, even though you were creating more than 300,000 new jobs. And you could get this environment in the U.S. where they create a lot of jobs and that increases the participation rate so it reduces the threat of inflation but gives you a very strong economy. Uh, and if that is the dynamic, then U.S. equities and global equities are very cheap at this point in time. Adrian, uh, good morning. The last time we spoke, uh, we didn't have this jobs report, and therefore the premise at that point was that maybe it's EMs which outperform DMs, even if there's a bit of a slowdown in the U.S. But now, in, in the light of the new numbers, if indeed the U.S. economy is rebounding and this is not a deep recession or a slowdown as was earlier feared, we've seen the, the FANG stocks already rebound 25% from the lows. Then the question is, will emerging markets still keep getting the money? Yeah, look, I think that's a very good question. And the data that we've had, particularly that employment report number, does improve the story for the U.S., uh, and so I think on a relative basis, maybe a little bit less capital gets reallocated from the U.S. into emerging markets. But I think the U.S. is probably standing alone 
as a developed country uh, with robust economic data. Uh, we do expect a little bit of an improvement in European data, 2019 versus 18, but it'll still be modest. And the Japanese numbers are still modest as well. So I, I think your conclusion is correct, uh, but I think you can allocate capital from Europe and Japan into EM. Remember, though, that EM is very dependent on whether the Chinese economy begins to stabilize and reaccelerate as we move into the second quarter. The data we've had out of China has been mixed. We had a very poor industrial profit number. Manufacturing uh, ISM or PMI number was weak. Uh, and the uh, equity market reacted to that on the first trading day on the 2nd of January. However, the ISM for services was quite healthy. Um, and I, I think what the market is going to more focus on rather than the economic data is really the policy response uh, the um, Politburo did meet with regards to the economy, and I think you will get some more stimulus coming out of China if we could also get some good news on the trade between the United States and China. That would be very helpful. I have to say it's difficult really to you know, make strong predictions around that. Uh, both Lighthouser and Navarro have very strong views about trade. And the president is behaving in a way that is very difficult to predict. Okay, that point is taken. Uh, Richard, uh, would you buy India now? Well, I, I think the fascinating thing is that um, uh, India has outperformed China uh, mm -hmm. substantially. Uh, I mean, over almost any time period, and certainly the most recent time period. Yes. I think the real reflection on that is really quite how badly the Chinese economy is doing. Mm. You know, there's no question that 6% um, uh, is, is completely out of order, and there are a number of Beijing academics talking um, of just over 1.5% growth, which will put Chinese growth substantially less than the U.S., you know. And that charade is obviously being reflected in the markets. Um, uh, India, of course, has its own issues, but India has done a lot better than China. You might say that India is too expensive, but on PEs, uh, it is a lot more expensive, almost double. But um, the fact remains that um, uh, there is still visible growth in India, whereas China is very opaque, and we just really can't tell at the moment. And what's your take, uh, Adrian? We are sitting on the threshold start of uh, the third quarter earnings. Uh, and there is all this political noise of giveaways after the polls. Uh, are you positive on India? Are you buying shares? Yeah, look, I, I think the outlook for India is fine macroeconomically. Um, we've got a very big dispersion in returns over the last one year. Um, and I would be looking at the weaker performance over the last one year. Uh, if we do get uh, some election-related spending, mm. then maybe some of the cement stocks that have performed poorly over the last year might might benefit from that. Uh, some spending on on the rural sector, perhaps uh, the two wheelers start to benefit from that. So rather than the market, which has really been dominated by the performance of uh, the IT stocks selected financials, because there's some financials at the bottom of the league table as well. Uh, I think we really need to see this coming through and the stocks that are down over the last 12 months beginning to perform if India is going to have a strong year relative to other markets. Okay, gentlemen, thank you very much for your take on how data is being interpreted and how the hope of a resolution on the trade deal is also being interpreted by the markets. Europe, uh, the Asian region at the day is high. The Hong Kong market, by the way, is up over 500 points. And the SGX Nifty is also cheering the same. We will take a quick break on that note, but we will have our top 10 stock list of the morning coming up on the other side.